Second of the week is the Autified U73B Compressor Limiter. Uh, this is um, an emulation of a classic people gear that uh, classic piece of gear, excuse me, that not a lot of people know about. Um, this is a limiter, the U73B, uh, going back uh, to the Telefunken days, um, and was quite often paired with the V72. Uh, preamps. So this would kind of fit into a similar power supply and the unit looked very much like this. So what they've done is an emulation of this uh, and it's an incredibly powerful Veramu compressor. So there's not a whole lot of Veramu compressors. Uh, the Fairchild uh, is uh, 670 and 660 or is probably one of the most famous. Uh, more recently the Manly Veramu compressor uh, for mastering, and that's where most of these things kind of found their application. So this particular limiter was used uh, primarily in mastering, and and for pretty much most of the records that were mastered during from the 1960s up through you know for about 20 years up to about 1980 were mastered through this limiter. So it's amazing because it and uh, being here in the United States, this is a piece of gear that I never saw here in the United States. But when you actually listen to it and hear what its capabilities. Are, it's really amazing and they've done some really cool things with it so um on the on the top end what you have here uh just to start off with is you have three basic settings here this is a compressor setting this is a bypass setting so when you uh pull it up here towards uh the center uh, and i'm not even going to try to pronounce the german language this was originally written in and then this is a limiter so those are those are the three terms there so instead of butchering uh, the language i'll just kind of leave that as it is we have release time so we have uh, when we have uh, standard release times, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, and 1.2 seconds, and then uh, what we have are multi-stage program-dependent release times. Uh, so these are usually multi-stage release times where there will be an initial kind of quick release and then a slower one. Sometimes these, like in the Fairchild, have like three stages on them, and so the total runtime for this will go up to 10 seconds. Uh, so the reason why they do this, and this gets to be part of the broadcast side, because it was really um, uh, designed as a broadcast limiter to begin with, and it was adapted for studio. There are five different versions of the U73, uh, and the U73B was particularly for studio use, and that's the one that they emulated, which makes perfect sense. So you get the release times with the multi-stage aspect. So the multi-stage thing just allows the release characteristic or the gain to slowly return to zero, so that way in a broadcast, if there's a few seconds of silence, you're not going to get this quick recovery where all of a sudden environmental noise raises really rapidly because sometimes these things were compressing uh, pretty heavily or limiting pretty heavily. Um, now, when you first open it up, there's a high-pass filter that's going uh, that's actually enabled. And this was part of the original unit, and it rolled off frequencies below 100 cycles. And this was probably more used in the cutting lathe process as a way of getting um, the record to cut better to vinyl. Um, they've enabled this so you can bypass that. Now, when you're in limiter mode, this actually ends up uh, being negated altogether. So you can't enable it uh, in spite of the fact that I'm clicking on it. Uh, you can bypass it here internally so you have that ability so you get the limiter compressor stage and now this is kind of interesting because the side chain can actually be fed individually so if you do this on a stereo channel the left and right will actually operate independently of each other which is kind of cool sometimes uh, you could have the left trigger both sides the right trigger both sides or the left and right sort of mono summed going in to trigger it so this would be something where you would preserve the integrity and the exact movement of the left and right, this would give you a little bit of separation with the individual. And I want to kind of focus on that because that's kind of a subtle aspect to this was really cool. Now you have an input and output gain, which you have here. The meter can actually show gain reduction input or output. So that's just here with the switch. So you could just kind of toggle your way through that. And this is a very interesting one. And I really like this. This is a calibration control. And you don't see this on a lot of limiters and plugins, but this is really cool because when we're dealing with vintage emulations. One of the um, one of the things that's not often talked about and not stressed enough is the gain structure going through the plugin. Because when the plugin is emulated, what was the digital gain structure that was used during that process that makes it? Was it minus 12? Was it minus 14? Was it minus 18 or minus 20 dBFS? And that affects the way that it operates inside the box. So that in a session where for 
for quite a lot of material that's tracked now, the actual calibration of the systems is ignored. Uh, industry standard is minus 18 dBFS, meaning that if you're working on an analog console and you feed a plus four line level signal, 1.23 volts, uh, tone, like usually 1K, into the unit, it will register at exactly minus 18 on the dBFS meter. So that would be an average signal level, and then of course peak levels may rise up and it gives you headroom. Okay, if you do a minus 12 alignment, then you don't have to push your analog console as hard, but you have less headroom before clipping. So this is a trade-off. Now, in this process, what's really cool about this is as you run audio through this, instead of just adjusting the input-output gains to pass through the threshold, essentially, this can sort of act like a threshold with the program material that's feeding in, where you can run this calibration as a way of getting the amount of gain reduction that you want based off of the individual track or the mix bus. And that makes it really, really cool because it can operate at nominal settings so I don't find myself pulling the input gain down to minus 18 and the output gain up plus 18 to make for it and then, you know, getting a couple dB of gain reduction. So this way, it's, so it's kind of interesting, and I'll kind of show this in action a little bit so you can kind of see it here. Now, there are many ways to use this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run uh, a mix with uh, some instrumentation here, and, uh, and let's just kind of... And then let's kind of work on some audio examples here. So what I'm going to start with first is just like a little bit of a subtle kind of pump here. So I'll just show you what the calibration does here. If I pull this down, right, I'm going to get a ton more gain reduction. And if I go up to zero dBFS, right, I'm going to get very little. So without affecting the gain at all, I can kind of make that adjustment. And you can really hear how this is like a really powerful mix bus mastering style limiter because of the, you know, that very new like depth and richness and kind of ballsiness of the low end. Really, really, really powerful. Plus there's also a really nice air. So now I just want to show you what the high pass filter sounds like in and out here. And, and if there was a, a style of music you would not have that in on, it would be this, <laughs> where you have the low end. But this actually may be better suited for more of an individual instrument, where, say, if you were putting it on a vocal or doing something like that, where that, that filter might help to enhance the richness without maybe making it too muddy. And that you could work that as sort of an option. Very cool thing to kind of add it. Now, one other thing before we kind of go through some of the other settings here, as I wanted to just show you the difference or go through the difference between the individual, which is the left, right, and then uh, go through the left and right kind of map together. So this would be the individual. So if you're feeding your left and right into two independent limiters with the same settings, then there would be a slightly different reaction. Also, there are different signals. Uh, primarily in this mix, the kick drum and bass drive all the center strength, and that's going to drive most of the limiting. If you watch it, it pretty much follows the four on the floor kick. But um, if you uh, then separate them, some of the left-right information that appears will also affect some of the limiting. And what I want you to notice here is the difference in spread in um, the strength of the center signal and or or the width of the signal it's a very subtle thing but uh, you, you may need to use headphones to hear the difference but uh, check this out so this is in this is individual and then i'm going to switch uh back and forth between that and uh the sum signal which will lock the left and right together
So it's interesting here to me, this left, right really solidifies the, like the low end. It just seems to sink a little bit lower. I was looking carefully at the game reduction meter, which you think might change by changing, by doing this, but it doesn't. And so just, just to kind of be aware, but if you ran some parallel tracks here, you could have the left side, uh, like a kick drum and the bass on the right channel kind of be triggering each other. There's no external key, but that would kind of be the way that you would do it if you wanted to kind of play around with those types of things. Now, um, there are presets that are here. Uh, and so you could do this, you could save presets or store presets, all the ways that you kind of go through for check for updates or go to the website and all of that is there. Um, and then, uh, what I wanted to show also on this example, just very quickly is the program dependent release, which I think is very cool as well. What's really cool about this when you go through some of the different settings and you could see the the release there and, and how long it takes to kind of recover. The cool part about this is that it acts as kind of a combination uh, like pumping of the attack, but also sort of a little bit of an averaging limiter, which is kind of cool. And what it does is it brings in some body. Really, 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 really cool way to use it. Uh, I just want to uh, switch right over quickly to the limiter. Uh, and and kind of work from that. So we'll work here with a, a kind of multi-band thing here, and let's just see. We're probably, uh, with this, the threshold will be raised automatically uh, as part of the limiter, whereas in the compressor, the threshold is sort of fixed at a lower place. So we're going to have to adjust our standard here. And you could hear how that kind of works or grabs onto that transient a whole lot more. Of course, a very different approach in, in for this particular style of music and for this particular thing, it's probably not the best choice. I think, you know, having a little bit more of the, the pumping breathing of the compressor uh, probably works a little bit uh, better. But um, and the design of it is meant to be very, very fast in terms of, of the limiter stage. The thing about Verum uh, limiters and it's always um, it's hard to sort of define um, ratios in terms of the way that they work because uh, there is some variance in there depending upon how much you're driving the the, uh, the tubes and essentially um, you know I'm not sure exactly the way that this is designed but essentially you're kind of modulating uh, with the side chain the the um, biasing current of the tube so there may be like a little bit different I'm not I don't know technically how this was actually done but that would affect the way that it responds and uh, and so as you drive more in 
it's not like it's a fixed two to one ratio or 10 to one ratio or 100 to one ratio or whatever it is. Uh, and that's sort of the tricky part about explaining these things. But a really, really cool one. I really dig this. It's really rich, warm, got a real ballsy low end, really captures the essence of, I think, a lot of that era of the 60s and 70s, really. Um, and uh, for a Veramu compressor uh, limiter, really powerful one, really cool. I dig this one a lot. Uh, that's a, um, uh, a unique one and a really cool one, not the usual one that's uh, the first one that rolls off the tongue when you talk about it, but um, when you start digging into some of these components, there's lots of these vintage things which were really amazing uh, for some role and having them in uh, your vintage um, uh, locker for Varamu limiters is is a good ad. So that's plug-in of the week, Audified uh, U73B compressor limiter. <laughs> 